Would you welcome, please, to the stage, Professor John Shine. Thank you very much, Geraldine, and uh, Governor, distinguished guests, uh, friends and colleagues. It certainly is a, an enormous uh, privilege to be here tonight, uh, both as chairman of this fantastic company, CSL, but also to help uh, celebrate with you a hundred years of, of achievements, uh, again, of, of, this, of this company. And it's particularly nice to share it with so many of you here that have made enormous contributions to that success, um, not over necessarily over the whole hundred years, but certainly over, over many years. Um, I'd like first, and my task this evening, Geraldine, is not to make a great speech. I'll leave that to Sir Gus Nossel and Brian McNamee and Paul Perot, but I'm just really here to briefly welcome you and say a few words. But I would like to add my personal thanks to the CSL board members that are here this evening, including the past chairs, Elizabeth Alexander and Peter Wade. It's really great to have them here. And of course, to all the CSL global leadership that were able to join us tonight, and all of the CSL employees who really contribute so much to this, this wonderful company. We've been, I mean, I, I think my few words, I'll concentrate on uh, a few individuals and um, because there'll be lots of other times we've seen everything in the video pretty much that highlights, I think, a lot of the achievements. But we have, we're very fortunate this evening to have here three individuals, the three that have led CSL throughout very different times. Neville McCarthy, who was a, the chief executive of the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories during those turbulent years that we saw in the video when things were pretty tough and money was very short, there was enormous pressures on the organisation. And I think it's clear that Neville was able to uh, withstand some of those pressures and then encourage government to put CSL on the list for potential privatisation. Then along came Brian McNamee in a positive sense, this very brash young man who was going to conquer the world. And he, he led CSL uh, in the privatisation exercise. And over the next 22 years, he really transformed it into a leading international company, which as we now know is rack, <coughs> ranked in the top 10 of our publicly listed companies in Australia. And when Brian decided to step down uh, a couple of years ago, after 20 odd years at the helm, he was still that uh, brash, relatively young man. With he had grey hair now, though. But uh, Brian has really—I cannot overstate the influence that Brian has had on the development of CSL, on the culture at CSL, and the success of CSL. And I think we all owe him an enormous uh, debt for that. And. One of, I suppose, Brian's parting uh, gifts to CSL uh, was to strongly recommend and encourage the board to appoint Paul Perot as his successor. And that transition, certainly from my perspective as chairman of the board, and I believe for all my fellow board members, the transition from Brian to Paul a few years ago was something of, which worked incredibly well and maintain the momentum that CSL had. It's always very difficult after you have a long-serving, highly successful CEO to bring in someone new and expect them to take over the reins and charge ahead without any hiccups. And Paul has done that in a very different manner from Brian, but he has done that with, in spades and uh, he has proven to be a great leader. He has cemented CSL's position as a leading international biopharmaceutical company and has positioned us very well for the future. There are many reasons, of course, which underlie the success of a company like CSL, but really at the forefront, CSL has been very fortunate to have had some incredibly inspiring, inspirational type leaders. Certainly since my time on the board, as well as Brian and Paul, and I won't say too much more about them, they can give themselves their own accolades when they speak, but um, we have in the leadership team People like Peter Turner, Gordon Naylor, Mary Sontrop, Peter Turvey, who are all here this evening, I believe, Tony Sieper, and Andrew Cuthbertson. And since I come from a research background, I have to highlight Andrew a little bit. I mean, Andrew is also someone who has made 
an incredible contribution to CSL over many, many years. He has brought the science, the medicine and the commerce together in a very unique way, which has been fundamental to our success. And there's very few individuals, I can assure you, having been around in this area for a while, that have the combination of talents that Andrew has and has managed to, to contribute to us. It's very fitting, as you saw at the end of that video, that on our hundredth year, CSL celebrates the launch of its first recombinant DNA, genetically engineered, sort of high biotech type uh, product, which we call Idelvion, which is a factor IX fusion protein. But this product is now going to transform the quality of life of thousands of haemophilia patients around the world. So it's an incredible success. It certainly doesn't hurt that it'll probably, I hope it'll be a strong commercial success. But CSL and Brian and Paul and the leadership team and Andrew Cuthbertson have been focused for many years on making sure that the patient comes first, that we bring the social and the economic value together because they do go together. And if we get the social value right and the patients are first, the economic value flows. So 100 years ago, as we saw in the video when CSL was set up, it clearly started out with the aim of bringing international medical research, medical discoveries, new developments in healthcare into Australia to protect the Australian population. As we stand here today, 100 years later, CSL is now exporting Australian innovation and Australian ideas and Australian developments and innovation from around the world to the world. And that success, as I mentioned, is because we really do fa focus on patients. So CSL today, as, we, as I'm sure you all know and we heard in the video, is a, whatever the stock price is today, is a $46 billion company with 16,000 employees operating in 30 different countries with major manufacturing facilities in Australia, the United States, Switzerland, Germany, the United Kingdom. I think it really is a, a, a great success story that we as Australians should celebrate very much. So again, I welcome everyone and really please enjoy, I think, what is a very well-deserved celebration of 100 years of an Australian icon. Thank you very much.